हावालोक के पक्ष में प्रतिवेदन स्वीकृत हुआ मान्य सदस्यगण नियम थ्री सेवन सेवन के अधीन मामलों को सभा पटल पर रखा जाए जो भी मान्य सदस्य थ्री सेवन सेवन के अधीन मामले उठाना चाहते हैं वो 20 मिनट में सदन के पटल पर रखने की उनको इजाज़त दी जाती है आइटम नंबर 23, 24। अनुदानों की अनुरक मांगों अतिरिक्त अनुदानों की मांगों के संबंध में शून्यकाल माननीय मंत्री जी के जवाब के बाद शून्यकाल होगा श्रीमती मऊआ मोहित्रा ऑनरेबल स्पीकर सर ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ माई पार्टी द ऑल इंडिया तृणमूल कांग्रेस I rise to speak on the additional demand for grants 2223. I begin by quoting the author Jonathan Swift. As the wildest writer has his readers, so the greatest liar has his believers. And it often happens that if a lie be believed for only one hour, it has done its work. Falsehood flies and truth comes limping after it. This government has us believe every February that this country's economy is going great guns. we are the fastest growing most efficient global player everyone is getting employment we are getting gas cylinders we are getting electricity we are getting pakka houses this falsehood flies for about 8 to 10 months and then the truth comes limping after it and now we are in december and the government says it needs another 3.26 lakh crores of additional funds over and above the budget estimate the government and the ruling party coined the term pappu you use it to denigrate to signify extreme in incompetence let me use the next few minutes to point out what the data the statistics tell us as to who the actual pappu really is nso numbers were out yesterday industrial output has shrunk by 4% in october to a 26 month low the manufacturing sector contracted 5.6% manufacturing is still the biggest generator of jobs 17 of the industry sectors that make up the index of industrial production have recorded negative growth rates forex reserves have fallen by 72 billion dollars in under a year the honorable finance minister yesterday during question hour mentioned how apparently 50% of fii inflows into emerging markets are coming into india wonderful but her colleague the minister of state for external affairs just last friday in response to a question in this very house stated that almost 2 lakh people 1 lakh 83741 people renounced their indian citizenship in the first 10 months of 2022 this exodus in 2022 takes the total number of indians renouncing indian citizenship under this government in the past 9 years since 2014 to over 12 and a half lakh people this year has already seen more people giving up indian citizenship than any single given year high net worth individuals are willing to pay up to a million dollars to get citizenship of portugal of st kitts of greece is this the sign of a healthy economic environment of a healthy tax environment who's the pappu now There is an atmosphere of terror in this country with the sword of the enforcement directorate hanging over businessmen and high net worth individuals. The ruling party buys lawmakers for hundreds of crores and yet members of the opposition represent 95% of lawmakers under investigation by the enforcement directorate. But forget politicians, they're tough. They can fend for themselves. Businessmen and high net worth individuals are soft targets. In the monsoon session in response to a query from my honorable colleague from the JDU Mr Rajiv Ranjan Singh the finance ministry informed this house that in the past 17 years the ED has opened 5422 investigations under the PMLA but has convicted only 23 people that is a conviction rate of a pathetic 0.5% since 2011 the ED has launched 1600 investigation 1800 raids and convicted only 10 people in the supplementary demand for grants i see that the government is asking for an additional 2900 crores to buy land and ready built accommodation office accommodation for the enforcement directorate the taxpayers you and i 
are paying for the ED's operations, for their prosecutions, for their investigations, for their foreign junkets. So do, do parliament and public representatives have no right to ask this nakhaunga, nakhane dunga sarkar, who's presiding over the ED, why there is such a pathetic conviction rate of 0.5%? Is the ED's job only to harass people, or is it to actually track down and uh, uh, catch the perpetrators of financial crimes? What is this level of incompetence? Who's the papu now? Members of the ruling party continue to spread falsehoods about the benefits of demonetization ad nauseum with no regard to the actual data. You have not achieved the goals of a cashless digital economy. You have not achieved the goals of phasing out fake currency, even after six years of your Dhamaka announcement. Currency in circulation has doubled from, 60, from 18 lakh crores in November 2016 to 32 lakh crores in November 22. Cash management company CMS's cash index for ATM hit an all-time high this Diwali. Cash is still king. Demonetization did not achieve any of the three targets. Who's the papu now? I've been reviewing the demand for additional grants, and there are various items in it that are shocking. From a total subsidy request of 1,9,000 crores in March, the Department of Fertilizers has asked for an equal amount in the supplementary request. Just urea alone is accounting for 86,000 crores. Phosphorus and potassium are controlled because they are nutrient-based subsidies. What is this government doing to stem the overuse of urea, which is killing the soil, killing productivity, and killing our health? What the soil needs is balanced use of fertilizers. Bengal has been promoting a balanced fertilizer blend of major fertilizers. And now we are suffering because the center is starving us of the most popular mix of NPK, which is the basal application for potato. During November 22, Bengal asked for a certain amount and only 33% of our demand for balanced fertilizers was met by the center. Most of the urea-based subsidy is going to Gale because Gale supplies the maximum gas to the fertilizer sector. When are we going to see the much-promised reform and competition in this natural gas sector? When are we going to see the promised transmission system operator, the unbundling of Gale? Is the government hiding and protecting Gale under the garb of providing urea subsidies to people? Nearly 2,000 crores supplementary demand is for large industry, whereas only 233 crores is for the MSME sector. But the MSME sector accounts for 90% of jobs in the industrial sector. These are very distorted priorities. About 45,000 crores demand is for Manrega and other rural employment schemes. This is far too little, far too late. The rural sector accounts for nearly two-thirds of employment in this country. Field reports suggest that only a very small fraction of rural households are getting Manrega jobs. That too, not more than 30 to 40 days instead of the assured 100 days. That too, there's a three to four week lag in wage payment simply because there is inadequate allocation of funds. There is also no supplementary demand for subsidized food delivery under PDS. There's an overall anti-poor anti -poor bias in the supplementary demand for grants. BSNL is being provided, this is very interesting, BSNL is being provided a viability gap funding of 18,000 crores for rural wireline operations. Prima facie, I don't have a problem with this, but if the government of India wants to keep giving BSNL viability gap funding, it is also giving it free spectrum worth 30,000 crores. Then why not make BSNL free roaming rural for everybody? If I'm not a BSNL user, I'm an Airtel user. I am paying for BSNL's free spectrum. It is not only BSNL subscribers who are paying for it. So if Airtel has poor network in a rural area, why can my phone not latch on to BSNL? Taxpayers are paying for this. Make it free for all in rural areas. The supplementary demand for grants will amount to an additional expenditure of about 4.36 lakh crores. This is going to raise the fiscal deficit above the target that you mentioned in the budget. So what is the government's additional revenue mobilization measures, especially non-tax revenue, that is going to make this up, make up the additional expenditure so we stay within the fiscal demand targets, fiscal deficit target. The Honorable Finance Minister yesterday stood in this house and uh, she likened us, the opposition, to Videsh ka dushman. And she said, we have jalan ka bhavna at India's growth. I stand here today to tell the Honorable Minister, wherever she may be, to tell this government to tell this ruling party that all of us here have given up our lives, our youth, our jivon, our jovon, as it were, to dedicate ourselves to the service of this great land, to the service of its people. 
We represent the farthest corners of this country, from Karimpur to Kutch, from Kadgodam to Kasargod. It is our inalienable right to ask the questions of this government. It is our right to question your incompetence. And it is this government's Raj Dharma that should make the Treasury benches sit down, listen to our voices, and not react like the proverbial Khisiani Billi. It requires enormous courage and tenacity to simply stand up here and speak the truth, and we are doing it. In contrast, the ruling party is moving from one incendiary issue to another, from the division of Bengal into North and South, to the Citizenship Amendment Bill, to releasing convicted lifetime murderers and rapists just before an election, to openly trying to challenge the judiciary into submission. You somehow keep hoping that you will scare India into submission and you will keep winning power term after term. But it's not working. You just went to election in three states. With all your might, with all your resources, you won and only won. The president of the ruling party could not hold on to his own home state. Who's the papu now? A certain honorable MP from the Treasury benches, who's given to trespassing in high security zones, who goads us all with equal measure of falsehood and fake bravado, yesterday took cheap pot shots at my state, the state of Bengal, with false claims of diversion of Manrega funds. To him I say this, sir, don't push your luck. I went to Mount Holyoke College, I worship Mark Ali, and I've been elected twice from a border constituency. In your lingo, I say to you, and this is not parliament, unparliamentary, don't take panga. A certain Jari Booty Baba says publicly, he likes women in saris, shalwars, and also nothing at all. In the presence of the wife of a deputy chief minister of the ruling party, hand on heart, ask yourselves, had any opposition leader said anything remotely similar, you would have been baying for their blood. The ruling party does not denounce it, there is no outrage. A convicted murder and rapist is publicly giving sermons while out on parole, and leaders of the ruling party are listening to it. You do not have the moral clarity to call out right from wrong. Who's the papu now? People tell me to keep quiet, to make peace in the name of soft Hindutva. I am Hindu, but I refuse to play soft anything. What this country needs is an elected government which plays hard morality, hard legality and hard economics, no soft anything. I urge this government and the finance minister to take control of the economy and I urge the people of India to take control over who they give the reins of this country to. Sawal ye nahi hai ki bastiya kisne jalai, sawal yehi hai ki pagal ke haath mein maachis kisne di. This is a question that India needs to answer. Thank you very much. Jai Hind. सत्य हिंदी का ऐप डाउनलोड करें गूगल प्ले स्टोर पर